very good morning to all of you. I'm delighted and honored to be part of this event. And I really thank the director of this Detsu College, who is one of the most prominent entrepreneurs in Nagaland. It's a role model for a lot of youngsters. And to come up with such a high, you know, high tech facilities in our state itself shows that his commitment for the upliftment of the society. And I congratulate. This is the first visit to my Tetsu College. And I have been invited so many times, but uh, because of time factor, I couldn't make it. But today, I thank God for giving this a moment and to meet all of you. It's nice to see the young people, the faculty who are so enthusiastic and attending this uh, one week uh, Cybersecurity Awareness Week. We are all living in a digital world that we all agree with that. With immense opportunity, our life has become so easy. Like those were the days where during we studied, uh, I'm from the technical background, and when we studied uh, engineering, we hardly have any computer. Computer we have seen for the first time when we go for the engineering. That was our time. But today, everyone, starting from, you know, forget about the college students, even the, the class, uh, one, two years, they are access to the mobile phone. Am I right? So that is the accessible the facilities that is available with each one of us. We are very fortunate to live in this digital age. But at the same time, the threats that has been increasing. If you see a few years back, and maybe next future seems to be very scary. When a director spoke about the hacking of his uh, Twitter, that is a very normal thing, right? It's happening every day. Every 39 seconds, one digital cy uh, cyber crime is happening across the world. Forget about us, even the CEO of Twitter, the Facebook, the Google, their account has been hacked. Just imagine that. We are living in a world where there are plenty of opportunity for the, the criminals that we are talking about. You know, since we are in this field for the last so many years, and Nailid is one of the forerunners and advocating such kind of awareness program, and Nailid Kohima, we are the lead, uh, lead role center, in, especially in Nailid, we are under the Ministry of Electronics and ID, Government of India. And recently, we also been uh, given the status of Team DB University from the July, and we are starting MTech program from this October session, where from next year onward, we are going to impart a very special program that is like MTech in AI, PhD in AI, or data engineering, cloud computing, blockchain, this sort of area, because R was given into that category. We have in 52 locations across the country, and the largest killing in IT and electronic sector is Nylit. More than one crore 50 lakhs has been enrolled across the country for the last 15 years. That is the capacity of Nylit. Within the Nylit, Northeast itself, we have in 22 locations. In Nagaland, we have three centers, one in Dimapur, one is in Chuchimlang. And if you see the, the trends of using the internet or the crime that is increasing, it's phenomenal. I was going through some of the statistics where it says that the global the internet user is 5.2 billion that people are using internet. Out of that, India accounted for around 700 million active users. I'm talking about active users. Social media, 4.76 billion who are active users. Now, on an average time spent by the user is around six hours, 45 minutes internet users. Every day I'm talking about. That is, I'm talking about on an average, right? Social media users around two hours, 25 minutes. I'm sure that the first thing what you do normally before you go to sleep, you see your WhatsApp, your Instagram, your, your uh, Facebook. Am I right? That is the last thing that you say good, good night. Good morning message, your WhatsApp, your Instagram, Twitter. How many of you agree with me? 
I think some are not showing because your director will not say anything. Feel free. Right? That is a trend that is happening. That means what? So what is the best part of the internet? Anyone can say? Yes? Connects people. Very true. And what is the worst thing about internet? People got distance. True. That has some social ramification on that, right? Now, if you see the best thing about internet is a global. That means we are connected every time, everywhere. Agree? And what is the worst thing about internet? It is a global. So the more number of users are connected, the more user, the victim of the cybercrime. Simple as that. Mind you, we are, we, there is no longer private concept, actually. I don't know you, but I know all the detailed information about who you are. In person, I may not know you, but I know people who are there in uh, different parts of the country. I know their profile. And most of the data is preached. No matter what we are talking about, the security of you know, uh, Twitter, yes, of course, they try to maintain the privacy, but most of the things are, that is available in the dark web. How many of you have heard about dark web? <coughs> yeah? Right. This become a business, you know. The largest economy in the, uh, as of now in the world is, which country? Huh? US is second? Third? Japan, fourth? India, fifth? I think it's Germany, I don't know. You just Google it. I mean, I don't know. Maybe. Right? Now, if this is cybercrime with economics, I'm talking about economics point of view. Now, if uh, cybercrime is an economy, it is a third largest economy. Not Japan. USA and China, third is, if cybercrime is an economy I'm talking about from the economic perspective. Right? Huge. Isn't huge. $10.5 trillion financial loss by the end of, by the starting of 2025. That is some of the studies they have taken. $10.5 trillion. Just imagine. It's a huge. Loss means what? It is gained by some other criminals, right? The loss is from, it may starting from the individual to an organization or even from the government sector or from the industry, right? Just imagine that. Then why, how does this cybercrime is increasing like anything? It's a very simple thing. I'm not here to encourage you, keep in mind that there are a lot of laws or, you know, that you can put you in jail, let it up in jail, don't try this. But to commit a crime, it's, it's very easy. Because now they provide the tools, the technology, the data which is required to be, you know, sell, they, they give as a service. You know what is service, right? That means if, if I'm a cyber, I, I wanted to hack some account, I want to steal some money, you didn't require a think, a big infrastructure. You need to have just a laptop, some tool, and internet connection, that's it. Now imagine if you have to go on uh, you know, roper to rope the bank. The main power that is required, the tactic, the technique that will be required. It's very difficult, right? Whereas in case of cybercrime, it is not the case. Even uh, you know, the um, the kitties, the small kitties, the amateurs, the cyber criminal, the tools, the script that is available easily. We we paid some amount and they will hack the system. That is why it calls white collar job. Right? We, we, we all want a white collar job, all of us, sitting in our AC room with necktie, you know, do some, doing all this work that is called white collar job, right? That is what the cybercrime is being offered to all of us. But mind you, don't try this one, right? No one is above the law. 
Now, the youngest who was, of course, there are so many people younger than that, but in terms of, uh, you know, when I talk in terms of uh, the amount that was the mess that the guilt, he was a 16 years old from the Oxford who was caught and he was having a $14 million gross hypergram. Just imagine that. 16 years old, owning a $14 million is a huge amount, right? How much money do you have in your pocket now? Right? So things are become so easy nowadays because of, so it is a two-edged sword, right? It has an advantage. At the same time, the threats or the easy accessibility of the, you know, the tools and technology that is available today, it's a very, very scary. I got a call from yesterday night from the Chandigarh, my colleague. Actually, since Delit Kohima is the, the only cyber forensic lab in the state, we are also gathering to the other neighboring northern, northeastern state. Recently, we have conducted a cyber forensic training for the officials of Egypt through the government of India collaboration. So, I got a call from around, it was around 10.30. Normally, I sleep late. And the call, I was just, he said, sorry to, you know, distribute this hour. I said, what happened? He said, one of my cousins, he got one uh, OTP message from the WhatsApp saying that your database need to be, you know, I mean, maintenance sake. So you please click in this particular OTP. And after that, uh, you're, then only you'll able to use the WhatsApp. That is what uh, the message came. And that is what he, you know, he did the same thing, entered a WhatsApp and his phone got compromised. And he lost, you know how much? Around 65 lakhs. What to do now? So I told him that some of the steps to be taken immediately. And cybercrime.gov is a portal where you can, you know, uh, uh, complain about the cyber incidents. So this is just a small example that I'm talking about, you know. The, the one guy who was, you know, uh, what do you call? He is just a travel uh, agent. He's just earning a mu around uh, um, 2,000 per month salary, but he got an income tax notice of 320 20 crore, income tax notice. He was shocked. A person earning a 2,000, 20,000 rupees per month got an income tax notice of 320 crore income tax. He was shocked. What is this? What happened was, using his Aadhaar number, using his all the PAN card, someone is opened a multiple bank account, right? He transact, and that is how, he, since he is not paying the account, account because he is not the one who is using, someone, they have stolen the identity of that particular person, right? I know how many of us, we don't know. Who knows, my number, something might have used it. We never know, right? Just imagine tomorrow morning when you wake up, you say, yes, Mr. Mr. Lana, you have an income tax to be of 100 crore. What, what will happen to me, yeah? This is happening. This only happened last week in uh, Maharashtra. We are not safe. We think that your profile, your picture, right? I think we know this very old story, but uh, one teenage girl in U.S., say that before his parents know that she is a pregnant, from the store it says that you are four or five months pregnant. So his father got so irritated and just complained against that particular, you know, uh, the, the dealer, the shop who sells baby products. So how they came to know is a pattern of the shopping that she did in the online, right? Whenever we, we browse internet or everything, all the footprints that, that, that your director is really pointed out, the digital footprint that we're talking about here, it's everywhere. Mind you, whatever you access, whatever the site that you visit, everything is there in the It is never deleted. Keep in mind that. It is never deleted. It's too scary. And that is where the forensic comes in, right? Tomorrow your mobile phone may be given to us and if your things are deleted, you from your hard disk, 
bring it to us, we'll extract everything and give it a, hey, this particular did his, visit this particular Instagram and he uploaded this particular message, he uploaded this particular picture. So whenever you are in the social digital platform, be very careful of that. Everything has been can be tracked, can be traced, and once you are in the, this digital space, it is forever. Okay? That is the reason why we are having such kind of awareness program. Now, if you see the, the cybersecurity, the things, there are three pillars of cybersecurity that is uh, people, process, and technology. Okay? You may have the best technology with you. Technology in a sense, suppose, assuming that your, your, uh, you know, your computer is like a home, like you have a best surveillance camera, you have a lock system, smart lock system, that is your technology, right? The process is you have to, you know, uh, whether to see the lock is closed or not, that is a process every time you have to lock your door before you sleep, right? Now, it is a responsible of a user to do the process. So I was going through the, some of the, you know, uh, what do you call the painting competition, some of you that you should update your antivirus, you should install your firewall. It's a great thing that you know, right? That is a process. You may have the best technology of iPhone or whatever phone, but if you don't have a proper process to update, I think how many of you update your phone? Why does it require it? New software, security patch, operating system, software, unless you have that because the vulnerability that it comes, right? So you need to update your software, your, your every, that is a process. You may have to, but unless you do it from your end. So out of these three pillars, the most important thing is the people. 95% of the cyber breaches happen because of the human error. I'm not saying that. That is a studies given by the IBM. Out of three pillars, technology, process, and uh, people, people are the most, the, within that thing, the weakest link is a human. That is the reason why the awareness, the knowledge, right? No matter, yes, I think it was in uh, last few months back, the Microsoft 360 Azure, it was hacked. So most of the corporates, people, they use only 365 uh, MS Office, right? You don't use a standalone thing. That way back in 2004, uh, 2004, just a few months back, just imagine. We are talking about the Microsoft, right? Their system was hacked. So the only thing to prevent to protect of such crime and attack is to aware to be informed. That is the most critical part of all the four pillar, uh, three pillars that I'm talking about today. And that is the objective of this particular awareness weakness. Uh, sorry, uh, awareness week that we are organizing here. Government of India, they have taken a lot of initiatives, and we are giving a different projects. Right. To aware among us, unless that things we don't feel now, because if that happened to you tomorrow morning, assuming that your pictures are already there with some of the uh, with the uncompromised thing, which are more because if you talk about deep fact, right? Today we have one topic in deep fact. How many of you heard that one? <laughs> right? Only two. I'm sure you guys know that, but you're not putting up your hands. Let us be interactive this session, right? You are here to learn something from us, right? Don't sit idle without asking any question. Be an interactive session. So the defect technology is very scary because my voice, my face will come as if it is not me, but it is someone. It is through the information technology, right? AI, artificial intelligence that we are talking about today. It's very scary. I think we have heard a lot of things. I have so many things to share, but because of time factor, it will be difficult to share all these things. A lot of things are happening. Have you heard of digital arrest? Right? What is digital arrest? You have read the newspaper. It's one of the trends that is also, you know, getting um, things are happening. It's not a physical arrest, right? So digital arrest means what? 
you know, suppose you are a social media or throw, it can be true, happen through WhatsApp, it can be true, through email or social media thing. So a person impersonating of the, assuming that a very popular face or DGB, for example, right? His face, his voice, he says, say, hey, Mr. Lano, you have, because of, uh, you have done this, this money laundering case or it's extortion, sex chasing, you have cyberbullying, you have done. And this is the court order. So you have to, you know, in order to, you know, uh, what do you call to execute your case, you have to pay this minimum number amount, right? It's the same voice, if, assuming that if I see the face of uh, your director calling to some of your students, do you believe that, right? Same voice. Very scary. I even do, if my teacher call, my director general call me immediately, sir, yes, I'll do that. I'll definitely respond that, <laughs> right? And unless you obey that, and they will also try to impersonate some of the lawyer in the courtroom, these are the, hey, the legal paper, unless you pay this particular amount, you will be in trouble, you'll put up in jail like that. And no one wants to go in jail, it may be a defamation case, anything may happen to you, right? We call this as a digital arrest. Physically, you have not arrested, but due to embarrassment, you don't want to share those things with, uh, with them, right? So things are becoming so scary for all of us, but at the same time, if you're, we have a concept called cyber hygiene. I think you know what is hygiene, right? Why do we regard hygiene? Huh? You know, you know the normal definition of hygiene, right? Right? You should take part every day. You should clean your hand before taking food. You should have a good sleep. You know, you should have a clean uh, cloth to wear. There is a hygiene, that normal hygiene I'm talking about, right? There's the same concept in, in cyber, digital space cyber, as we call the cyber hygiene, where you have a proper password, two-factor authentication that your director has mentioned in the address, right? Updating you on the various, every time, updated your software, that is what we call a cyber hygiene, right? So it is, we cannot stop the cyber crime. But the only things that we can do is we can prevent it by more aware of that. I also got a lot of call from my, uh, you know, uh, because since I'm already informed, a lot of call, actually it happens, I think two, two weeks back, uh, I think it, it called from one of the bank, uh, I say it's a bank, they say that, see, uh, you have applied a loan. I don't have an account in there. So I said, see, I'm a forensic guy, I can catch all of you, immediately he hang up the phone. Right? It happens to all of us. And one of my friends, you know, that is what we are not, our life is exposed, there is a threat for all of us. Last Friday, one of my friends called from Bangalore, and he and wife were talking about they wanted to change the refrigerator. Okay. It was around uh, 2 uh, in the evening, around 4 or 5. Now, immediately at around 9.30, he received an email from Amazon. These are the different refrigerators with calls and facility. How does it happen, yeah? They have never said anything, but they talk that we want to change the refrigerator now because we're all connected now. IOD devices are being everywhere, right? So we, we are no longer a private, I mean, in our this digital space. So today, I will not take much time. Of course, I have already taken almost maybe 15, 20 minutes. But, you know, I just want to encourage all of you. Like, as I said, we have initiated a lot of uh, projects like uh, the Government of India project, like uh, IECEA, Information Security Education Awareness Program, which is uh, across the country, where Nelit Kohima is the regional center for the entire Northeast. And we also developed an app. What is ICSES app? That, uh, it's, it's our own uh, app developed by Nilit Kohima team. It was launched in the G20 summit in Bangalore in August 9, uh, uh, 18 August 2023. It was launched. It is available in uh, 24 languages, including 16 Naga tribe language, foreign, uh, seven foreign languages, Hindi, Nagamese, Telugu, everything. And these are some of the initiatives that we want to you know, give it to the citizens of the country so that they'll be more informed and aware and to prevent from such kind of cyber crime and cyber attack. So, the only security is only you, no one else. No bodyguard, they may have the best bodyguard and they may have the high security in, but the, the best security is you and me. Then only we can prevent. 
And today we have so many uh, interesting topics, and you, I hope that through this particular uh, kind of awareness program and through this kind of panel talk, you will learn a lot of things. With this, I conclude my thought, and I wish you all the best. Thanks a lot.